Hi guys, hope everybody is doing really well today. Uh, today I've got um, a couple of interesting auction lots, um, which I'll probably split over two videos because there's probably too much to fit in this video. Um, I bought one thing really special, which I've been after for quite some time actually. Um, so I'll show you that as well. Um, and I'll show you this first. So this was the first lot I bid on in the auction. Um, and I bid on it for two items, which are these two. And for some reason, i just quite drawn to these items. Um, this one is kind of interesting because it's a Win Timmins, which make adjustable spanners. Um, looks to be quite nice condition, chromed. Um, Win Timmins, which you can see just here, Win Timmins, um, is the same company what makes adjustable spanners. So I thought this was nice. I didn't know it was a Timmins, um, but I just keep buying these items. And when I see them, I just can't help myself. This one is a R Heath and Son. Um, a little bit more rusty. This one needs a definitely needs a wire wheel and a wax before it rusts any more than it already has. Um, I do have a bunch of these. I had a look in the drawer. <laughs> I've already got four of them, but they're all slightly different. Um, different gate. This is a TY. This one's um, similar to that one. Is this got any writing on it? This is a Wright Butler. So there's a few different designs. Um, I don't know why I just keep buying those things. This one hasn't got the beak, but it's very, very similar. TY again. So um, a few of them. Has this one got writing on it? Um, just says Y gauge Imperial. This one looks quite early. It's got some scrolly. So that's an owner's mark. Just let me shut this door, it's doing me a in. Freaky. It was annoying that was. So yeah, so I picked up two of those. Um, I can't help myself with those, I don't know why. I just um, There's a few other highlights in this auction lot. There's this fold-out aluminium wire gauge, which I thought was really cool. I do have one similar, but it's made out of brass. I don't know if I can find it to show you. Um, probably not but yeah I do have one similar which is made out of brass so I thought that was quite nice and um, we've got some fold out um, ones this is standard wire gauge this is broad arrow 1950 this one is really kind of funky it's a more is it more than right no it's a Chesterman Sheffield so I quite like that one and um, looks like millimeters that side inches that side and um, we've got lots of drill gauges some very simple ones and then some bigger ones this one is a little bit interesting it's got letters on it so i'm not sure if this is something to do with musical instruments or if it's just letters refer to the measurements i think it says 1935 on it if i'm not mistaken and um, we've got a row book um wire gauge which is kind of funky um, this one's a bit plain. Someone's probably a homemade one. Someone's probably R W R W H Duns or something's probably made that one. This one's quite a nice one. This is a Whitworth standard wire gauge, different sizes. Um, and this one here is a Morse drill taper gauge. Um, it's got the different sizes. So if I ever need to know what something sizes, I should be able to figure it out. We've got another. This is more and right. Um, Morse twist uh, drill gauge as well. We've got a bunch of these round ones, which I think those are quite funky. Um, different designs, uh, some in better condition than others. This one is a Barker, Barker and Sons or something. I don't know. Um, what's this one? Imperial gauge, E Sheffield, something or another. So, and there's a few smaller ones which are funky. So yeah, overall, it was an interesting lot. Really pleased this one is a Timmins. That's a bit of a bonus. Um, so one, two, three, four are my favourites. Maybe that one's quite got a look to it, but they're all interesting. I do have a few drawers with these in. I don't know why I keep buying them. Um, this one is also Chesterman, actually. This one is also a Chesterman um, number 559 something. What's that one? Number five nine one. So that's very similar, but this is a more complicated version of that one. And um, this one's a funky white gauge. It's got a bit of a unusual design to it. This is also Chester Chesterman, same brand. 
Um, so they made quite nice wire gauges. This one's interesting, it's got a wire gauge and it's also a set of calipers, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, I've got a few. This one's like kind of a wire gauge and an angle finder and a drill. It's a bit like a, a an angle, it's a bit of a, bit of a, you know, multi-tool that one. So yeah, so pretty pleased. Um, I'll have to find space for those, but it's a nice lot and a few interesting uh, Morse tape, drill, whatever. Um, but I just, I don't know why I'm, a, I'm attracted to these things. I just keep picking them up. This one's one of my favorites, actually. This one um, is made in France in 1857. And I thought for 1857, this is very, very well engineered, you know? Um, I thought this was a beauty. So the French were ahead of the game when it comes to wire gauges back in the day. Um, really nice. You can see it's all hand stamped which I always like to see, you know, it's not perfect, slightly higgledy-piggledy, that always makes it more attractive to me. And I picked up this one recently, which is a 45 degree corner, what, I don't know. Funny anyway, so yeah, so that's the wire gauges. Now I'll show you the pièce de résistance, my favorite item and the main thing I bought from the auction. Um, and then I'll probably make a video with the next lots and the stuff I've picked up off eBay. All right, I'll show you the next thing. So the thing I was most excited about actually buying was this um, made in England record vice display. I put some zip ties because sometimes when you open a drawer and you close it, it can shake it and it can fall off. So it's a bit ugly, but it's a record stand. I'm missing, because I haven't got one, a number two. They're all marked on it, number two, number one, zero and double zero. And it's a lovely thing from the 1930s. I do have a Woden one with the original vices and I do have a record cast iron like doorstop advertising. Um, I mean, two minds whether or not I should restore the vices and paint the stands or leave them sort of oldie worldy eagledy piggledy sort of thing. And then we've got my uh, collection of York vices, all the five sizes they made. But yeah, I will pick up a number two to fit there and I'll show you but I was super pleased with this record the auction company really wrapped it well so it took me about 20 minutes just to actually get in the actual thing but you guys will have to tell me do you like do you get a kick out of these sort of advertising stands I mean I love advertising stands I mean this one's a really cool one as well this is um Gilpin Orgibits cast iron you do see drill indexes but you never see an advertising auger bit stand. That's really cool. And then Baco made some lovely display stands just there, which is really nice. Um, this one's probably my favorite with the red. I just like advertising stuff. Don't know why, just attach me. And this little King Dick's quite nice from the King Dick Tool Company. I'm not sure what that would have been off. But yeah, um, so you guys will have to tell me, well, do you like advertising items as well as the tools? This is one of my favorite items. This is a Baco um, advertising sign from the 1920s. And this one as well, which is one of my favorites. This is a Garrington tool display, vintage tool display with, um, or, you know, all, well, some of the original spanners on it, not quite complete. And I've got a few more spanners down there as well, just for good luck. But yeah, super pleased to add to another vintage. Oh, there's Ingersoll Rand cast iron plaque up there as well. So yeah, pretty pleased. Always nice to find advertising pieces. And um, this is actually a good one. This is a massive Spear and Jackson advertising saw. Really cool, really like that. And then round this corner, I do have a Crescent tool display with the original wrenches, which are on there. So and you can tell I've got a bit of a thing when it comes to vintage stuff. So yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, thanks for watching if you got this far. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.